she is very devoted to science. She is living for science, that's clear. She's intense in what she is doing, she's very authentic. So it's not somebody that you can fail to notice. And she has also the capability to, to think outside the box. Emanuelle is a very caring person. She can also surprise you sometimes with her wit and sense of humor when you least expect it. Excellence is more a choice than a limitation. If I want to describe a, a, a certain mechanism to the scientific community, I need to make sure that it's correct, especially if I know that there is a chance that it's exploited for medical purposes. You cannot uh, spread something that, that is not, uh, that is not uh, true. Excellence is a choice rather than a constraint. This is the maxim guiding Emmanuel Charpentier's work. This French scientist, specialized in biochemistry and microbiology, has literally revolutionized the work of hundreds of her colleagues around the world. In 2011, her lab described the components of a defense system of bacteria, and in 2012, she and colleagues, including Jennifer Doudna, showed that it could be used as a gene editing tool called CRISPR-Cas9, a complex assembly that works like genetic scissors capable of targeting any gene in a cell in order to modify it. My goal was really to understand the fundamental mechanisms of the bacteria, allowing to, to detect a pathway that could be exploited as a, as a novel uh, anti-infective strategy. And I ended up uh, hitting a pathway that actually led to a, just a, a broader application in the sense that the technology can have not only uh, an impact in the field of infectious diseases, uh, but also an impact in the, in the treatment of, of a large uh, variety of, of diseases. The real reason why this, this work has gained so much attention is because it allows scientists and technologists to have a very versatile and powerful tool for performing their research and for obtaining genetic developments which wouldn't be otherwise possible. And uh, what has discovery has done actually, it has um, saved us a lot of time. For example, when we used to generate one knockout animal, it took, took us, for example, one year. Now you can generate multiple uh, deletion within a, a mouse uh, within a very short period of time. As a plant scientist, I'm really thankful uh, for the t work that Manuel has done, her discovery in this genome editing uh, area because it actually provides a promise to revolutionize plant breeding and uh, that you know plant breeding in relation to agriculture crops or also to forestry species and I think we're the plant community now is working very hard to develop this technique and I think we will see a lot of good come out of this in in the future. I think this has become a the tool for the future. CRISPR-Cas9 changed daily routines in research labs around the world and revolutionized molecular biology. But this discovery went beyond the limits of science, going on to make a name for itself outside the laboratories. It's inspiring for others. Uh, it increases our attractiveness. It means a lot for the students, but also, of course, for the environment as such at the university. Uh, so, so the environment created by a group of, of scientists, but also working more widely, both locally and internationally. It, it's fantastic. It's a breakthrough finding. It's in, in inspiring for many others to see that you actually can achieve such breakthrough find, findings. It was in Umeå, Sweden, at the Laboratory for Molecular Infection Medicine Sweden, that Emmanuel Charpentier's research succeeded. France, USA, Austria. As with many scientists, her career path involved both moving home and international collaboration. It's been a key factor contributing to the success of this young woman, who's seen by her colleagues as a mobile researcher. My mobility started when I moved uh, from the Pasteur Institute, where I was a PhD student, uh, to the US in New York, at the Rockefeller University, where I did my first postdoc. 
I discovered also what internationality uh, means in a, in a research setting. Also a combination that maybe you could find more in the US at the time, now it's different in Europe, it has evolved, but uh, the possibility to have less, let's say, hierarchy. This was really something I wanted to, to pursue and continue, even though it was, yeah, it, it's never that easy. I think essential to, to the success of science with the possibilities to exchange ideas and they exchange methods and being able to, to send the staff uh, to other laboratories, wherever they are in the world. Well, uh, she certainly is uh, very international in her uh, outlook on science, which is common, of course, uh, in, in uh, most fields of, of life sciences. But she has uh, had a career that, uh, that proves that she is also then able to, to move and set up her research in different settings. Uh. Mobility is very important because you need fresh brain, you know, fresh ideas. And um, that is also, in a way, good, and sometimes it also can be a disadvantage, because setting up a lab requires a number of years. It's really impressive to see how she's managing to do these, these transitions, I would say. Thinking about all the practicalities and, and also, t you know, in order to be um, uh, productive during the transition, which is very, very hard. Having recently moved to Germany, Emmanuel Charpentier is head of the Department of Regulation in Infection Biology at the Helmholtz Center for Infection Research and Hanover Medical School. A new step forward, a new laboratory and a new team, though without ever breaking the ties with her colleagues in Sweden. There is one project that is uh, in collaboration with my team in Sweden. Uh, we have weekly lab meetings where we are uh, communicating via video conference. And uh, so we are using a lot of the video conference tools and I try to, to go to Umeo uh, as often as I can so that there is not a, a, a loss in, in, in the connection. I'm looking at the, um, as my teacher means, um, 20S proteasome in uh, Archaea. And you had to fill this form, like just to sign and say... If it's For me, the mobility I'm has sure. also allowed me to get some, a certain independency from, from the systems, in the sense that the systems are very important, in the sense that they provide uh, the scientists the frame to do science. But it is uh, very important to try to, to preserve a certain um, possibility to still be creative, uh, st still not be influenced. And so this is uh, always a challenge of, for, for a scientist. Emmanuel Charpentier's creativity has given new wings to molecular biology, but it's also even above all in the field of medicine that the hopes are highest. Clinical applications of the CRISPR-Cas9 mechanism could accelerate the development of treatment for hitherto incurable diseases. Of course it's exciting because we have, uh, when you think of, about certain chronic diseases like cancer, I mean you can treat cancer but you cannot kind of heal it, okay? You cannot, you cannot remove, uh, for example, uh, genome errors which uh, take place in which might lead to cancer diseases, but if you can correct them, for example, in cells, um, you, you, you put them back to square one, you make the cells healthy again and eliminate maybe chronic diseases. I think that's why I'm excited about it, because it's so easy to do it. It has been shown already in animal models how easy it is to edit genes uh, using this method. And I'm quite optimistic that this might also be then used in, for example, to uh, treat human diseases in the future. While following closely the development of medical applications for her discovery, particularly through a company she has set up in Basel, Emmanuelle Charpentier continues with her research in uncharted territory. That's what she likes best. During my journey from Austria to Sweden to now Germany, with for sure uh, the overall thinking being developed in Sweden, and I do know what it meant. And I do know that if I want to uh, impact uh, my field of research in the future, 
uh, which may happen or may not happen as, as it is in science, I need to be in a kind of uh, mindset ready to approach my future science as I did it in the past. Which means that uh, I will have to think very carefully uh, how am I going to do it because this is really my wish.